Hello, everybody. Um, again, it's Tuesday at two. And what happens Tuesdays at two? Well, we have Behind the Veil. So here we are again um, for another round of questions and answers with our panel regarding all of your questions regarding uh, anything wedding, right? Because again, we're talking about this crazy time. We, we just don't know what the world is going to bring to us, what we have to work with, all that good stuff. And so um, we are here to, to answer some of those questions. Now, the, we never know where the conversation is going to lead. So that's part of the fun of this, this group. But um, I do have uh, some incredible news. And I'm actually going to let Brooke talk about our special guest next week. Brooke, tell us what who is happening, what's happening next week. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> no, you're still muted. Oh, there you go. I guess I'm still on punishment from last week. <laughs> 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 so um, next week, we are going to have a very special guest. And our special guest is going to be Miss Vanessa Van Cartier, the current reigning Miss Continental 2019 current until 2021. Um, and so she's going to um, be our on our panel as a guest um, next Tuesday. And then 30 minutes following that will be um, a one-on-one -on -one interview with me and her, which Keith will talk about that at the end of our show. Yep. So, so here's the great thing is that Miss Continental, and so, you know, we've all seen RuPaul drags race or drag race, right? So we know like that, that there's a whole industry. Well, in that industry, there are obviously talent uh, competitions. And this is the end all be all of talent competitions for the drag world. And this is the winner of those competitions. And she is incredible. And her story about how she had to um, moved to the States, rebuild her life after devastating losses. And then of course, having to deal with COVID and what the entertainment industry is doing in response to this is incredible. So I am so excited to get kind of a, a different perspective because we've always, we talk about weddings all the time. You know, we talk about, you know, um, the stuff that we see as event professionals, and this this will give us a different perspective, and uh, and and I just think that it'll just bring a whole new um, bit of information to our world. So I'm super excited, and then hopefully after that we have a couple of other special guests that we will be announcing later. But uh, yeah, thank you, Marcy, for bringing this up because now I can ask because that would be amazing, right? All right. So again, welcome to Behind the Veil. My name is Keith Willard. I am the owner of Keith Willard Events, and I am your host for the Behind the Veil series. This is kind of my little world. Um, with me, I've got Marcy Gutenberg with An Affair to Remember by Marcy. Hi, Marcy. She is our invitation and communication expert. So she is going to help us figure out how to relay all this information to our wedding guests, like in, especially in, you know, how do we, you know, work with uh, interreligious uh, weddings and how do we deal with move dates and all those good things. Then we have Nicole Sellers with Clay Events or CLE Events. She is a, uh, <laughs> look, she's like, oh, princess, I love, I love the crown. I'm just saying, I love the crown. But she is our uh, rental expert. So she is a, an expert in vintage furniture and rentals and building props for your weddings. And then, of course, we got Tyler Black, right, with Cache Events. Ka Tyler Black is our specialist when it comes to decor and florals. He is does events all over the country and has joined us and, and continues to join us every Tuesday too. We couldn't thank you more. And then we've got Brooke Logan Stoner. Yay. So Brooke is our, like, yay. Yay, our, our woman on the street. She is the person that is, <laughs> gives us our fresh pr perspective, not from a professional viewpoint, meaning like not as an event planner or a invitation specialist. Oh. I'm just saying, as somebody in the real world that says, really, are you kidding? That's not how I think, right? So Brooke Logan Stoner, and she's also happens to be my event manager and I couldn't love her more. So hello everybody, it's great to see you all. Hi. Hi. Hello. I know, so Tyler, you're on the road. What's- <laughs> You're being like chauffeured over there. I know. I'm being, 
I'm, be, I'm, I'm being driven like Miss Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, driven like Miss Daisy. That's so sky. So, are you good? I mean, are you in a, a good place to like have this conversation? Because you know, we get a little crazy here. Who me? Yeah. We're good. <laughs> He's like, yeah. it's not the, it's not my first time in the back seat of a car. <laughs> <laughs> On his way to the Piggly Wiggly. On his way to the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nicole, you are where? You're up in North Florida somewhere right now, right? Daytona. You're in Daytona, Central Florida. Wow. Where's so that's slightly, a whole that's a whole different world up there. Yeah, slightly less crazy than South Florida, but not much, you know. Just a different right. just a different kind of crazy. Yesterday yeah. I, I was in an Uber and um, you know, you're supposed to wear your mask and everything in the Uber. And this woman had like taken a piece of like saran wrap and like kind of saran wrapped between the passengers and the front driver. Saran wrap. Are yeah. You, really? Like a like a dental dam. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. Uh, but, uh, okay, like she put up a lesbian dental dam between yeah, you and the yeah. front seat. It's just okay. Like, yeah. So saran wrap, and she was calling it her cracker uh, plexi glass. <laughs> and she said, "Well, you don't have to wear your mask because I have this protective." I'm like, "Oh fuck, I'm not taking it off." Sorry. Ah, I love it. That's so funny. Dental dam. I love that. Oh, I I love that. And so that was in your Uber. So she just literally had some like. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's special. It's special up here. Wow. I, I, I don't think you could have come up with a better example of special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And so, Marcy, you're in a brand new location. So congratulations on the new place. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, living out so by the if, beach. Mm, so if you guys don't know, Marcy it sold her house within like 24 hours. It's like two days. It was like two days. Two days. That was it. I know. You would think that thirty in this days. Market, I had thirty days to get out. <laughs> oh my God! They're like bye. <laughs> You're like this isn't your house anymore. Bye. Mm -hmm. No, no. Seriously, it's crazy in this world that your property sold yeah. within a couple of days. It's just. Crazy, you already have a place right? to go. Oh, they're in the new yes. place. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I know they're in the new, place, in the new place, but I didn't know if they. You know, you sometimes people put the house in the market while they're looking because they expect you know. But you already yeah. had a place. We didn't have a place. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> so we had to like scramble to, we knew where we wanted to go. Okay. Gotcha. We had to scramble and get everything in place very quickly. Oh, gotcha. Well, yeah. wow. that must have been a little stressful. Well, wow, right? Yes. Exactly. Like mm -hmm. add on to the COVID experience. Yeah. All right. So yes. let's dive into um, this week's Behind the Veil. So we've gotten some some great questions that have been sent to us. So by the way, if you have a question for Behind the Veil, all you have to do is send it to info at keithwillardevents.com. That's info at keithwillardevents.com. Or if you are part of any of our Facebook groups, so in other words, if you're part of Marcy or Keith or Nicole or Tyler or Brooks Facebook group, you can send them a message with the, the question and we'll answer it on next week's Behind the Veil. But our first uh, question is kind of a fairly common question. Um, it was, should I provide PPE for my guests? I mean, I think that's kind of a no brainer. Yes. At this point, I would say so. I mean, most I think most people are going to have their own anyway, but you do get the rare person who like forgets it. They thought it was in their purse. That's happened to me where I thought I had it in my purse in the car and then I get out to go somewhere and I realize it's not there. So I love the places that sell the masks outside for a buck. So I, I mean, know, you know. I know. And you know, and it cost them all 20 cents to get that mask or they got it free from somewhere. But I mean, <laughs> it where do you draw the line as far as you know making sure people have that PPE but also that it doesn't become the center of the event right because there you could go overboard and like you know have six of those high tops all set across with you know sanitizing lotions and wipes and masks and plastic glasses I mean where, where where's the balance I think as long as you make it look cute and you add some personality to it, you know, I, 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 people will appreciate, I think everybody, I don't think anybody wants to be sick. Right. And, um, I think everybody wants to come out and enjoy your celebration. So make them do be tongue in cheek, have fun with it and, and let them do what they need to do to feel comfortable. Marcy, you were going to say something. No, I was going to say the same thing. I mean, you can actually have the hand sanitizer in the bathroom, 
but I would also consider having one in the room should they touch something and they need something very quickly. Off to the side, something very small in the corner. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big elaborate display. It's just you want to make it their their time with you comfortable so that they can enjoy and remember the good, you know, the good moments with you. Right, the good moments. So, you know, or or the fact that somebody sneezes in the wedding and everybody goes running, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> You know, nine o'clock, you're ready for the bar to close. Also, you just have to have your, your bridesmaids and groomsmen cough, you know, and then everybody's like, bye. Um, well, I actually had a wedding that had like a little bit of a little jar or a squeeze bottle on every single table. And it was tiny. It was little, right? It was just a, a little bit of sanitizing lotion. And this was just before all the COVID started, but it was subtle, right? It wasn't like in your face kind of thing. But now... I feel like masks with like blinged out would be an awesome thing to give people. Like your bridesmaids and groomsmen should have like, what? Okay, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, you know, they should have something special. Something I mean, that make- The groomsmen can like, they can match it to their ties. You can match it to the wedding dresses or something like that, you know, to the, to the bridesmaids dresses, but something that is gonna tie in with the whole look, but not take away from the event. Right, something that matches them because you know they're. I I just looked on Amazon and they're selling, <laughs> they're selling like uh, dresses that have a, a matching mask. Oh, mm -hmm. What? Come on, that's awesome. By the way, it says that Brooke is talking, but I don't hear you. And the mask is not going to go away anytime real soon. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, we just have to deal with it and embrace whatever it is and move on from it. You know, yeah. life carries on. Life carries on. So I think that the answer to this question, the simple, the, the simple question, the simple answer is yes. Provide some PPE for your guests. I think masks at a minimum need to be provided. And then if next step is sanitizing uh, gel of some sort and then gloves. Do you think gloves? I mean, because gloves, I feel like, you know, we could have some fun, you know, some Brenda Beccaro, <laughs> like, you know, halfway up the arm kind of thing the pink gloves with a little late no just kidding <laughs> right well i'm like tyler come on peep in here man you, you I, I was thinking like you know betty white well glo gloves are kind of in my opinion it's better just to have the, the hand the hand sanitizer because the gloves once you touch something there's they're they're contaminated it's true, but you know, all I can think about is that. Do you guys remember that they had those rubber gloves with the, like the fingernails and stuff on them? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my god, I, I just love that. I just love that because it, it adds to it, and I feel like you could do that for a wedding. I think there's lots of fun things that you can do with the PPE. All right, well, so next question would be: My family is killing me with questions about the wedding in regards to this whole world. Change, not change, dates, not dates, um, and that they have no answers. Um, who do they smack first? <laughs> <laughs> I love our questions. Who wound you up today? I know, I know. I'm just telling you, these are the questions that we get from people, and I just love the people that are like, who do I smack first? I'm like, well. I think it just, you know, I mean, me, I, I would just be very upfront if it were my family, and I kind of have to look at it like that in the respect that it's, you know, if this is your day, you have to start realizing that part of the control is, is in your court. So you have to start setting some boundaries and saying to your family, listen, I completely appreciate all the input that you, you know, and love that you have for me, but I really want to try to you know, embrace the situation that I'm comfortable with. And I'd love for you to share in the day, but I really need to tone down some of the um, bantering or the, not the bantering, but the- Well, okay. The, you know what I'm saying? I know, but come on, we all have family. And, and as much as we would love to be able to respond to our family with, can you guys just give me a break? We know they're not going to give you a break. You know, they're not. They, they, you know what I told my family? I said, listen, I want you to show up. I don't want you to do a thing. I just want you to show up and enjoy. Well, but then they say, when do we show up? 
And well, like, you know, my, my aunt Edna is sick and I, you know, am I going to be protected? And oh my God, what happens if I get sick when I'm there? And, you know, and by the way, can you drive me from the airport when I, <laughs> I don't want to take an Uber Yeah, with plastic. Well, I know because come on, how many times have you had that where the, the bride's like, you know, planning and they're like, oh, but we're going to show up on Thursday. Can you come and pick me up from the airport? Like, no, you're an adult. Stop. What's wrong with you? You know, because family, unfortunately, is the one area that crazy continues. I mean, you just can't control that crazy sometimes. Consider putting on, like, if you have a, a Facebook page or not a Facebook page, but a website where you're giving information to your guests about your wedding, consider, consider having some information about the PPE protection that you're going to provide. Right. So it eases their you know, it allays their fears before they get there. Right. Well, and I think that's important. It's like, you know, or you say, look, you know, I've always told people, it's like, you know, you need to be able to give people a date of when you'll get uh, an answer to them so that it gives you a, a, an amount of time. So in other words, if you start getting a lot of questions that say, well, what's happening? When are you going to do it? Or, you know, are you, uh, you know, what about COVID? Uh, I see the infection. You say, okay, we know that this is happening. We are going to pull together all of our vendors. We're going to come up with a plan. And August 1st, we're going to send out information regarding the wedding. If you give people a date, a date, an actual date, a specific date, that give, buys you some time where they stop asking those questions. Mm -hmm. Because you've told them, yes, we know that this is happening. But August 1st, we'll get you those, que those, those answers. I mean, what do you guys think about that? I think that's perfect. Nicole? You're, you're giving them exactly what they need to know. They don't need to know all the details yet. They just need to know that they're going to have an answer by a certain date. Yeah, I think that's good to buy yourself some time. In half a mile, turn right onto North Dixie Highway. <laughs> oh, good for you. Turn right on North Dixie, Dixie Highway. Tyler, we know you're going to the bathhouse. Oh, wait, did I say that? Okay, that's <laughs> Well, wow, I guess I'll be the lady today. Oh, I guess. <laughs> <right. laughs> Hell has wow. frozen over. I'm like, where are you going, Dixie Highway? Hello. Yeah, especially Dixie, especially like during this time that, you know, everything's being renamed. So I'm like, oh, that's even worse, Dixie. Nice. Take job. a left and bring me some more wine. <laughs> I bought you a ton yesterday. What's wrong with you? Um, I was thirsty. right onto North Dixie Highway. Well, so let's go back to the question of like uh, our our family driving us crazy because we all know that our parents installed the buttons, right? The reason that they're so easily pushed is because they installed them, right? So, do you guys have any like advice? for brides about uh, reducing the stress that comes with planning with parents. And quiet, that's nice. It is, oh, it's a, it's a hard, hard one, I need a question. What was the question? The question is, do you have any advice to give to brides about how to reduce stress in communicating with parents regarding your wedding? So, you know, because parents sit, tend to put their thought or their perspective or their uh well their thoughts into the wedding planning you know and it's it doesn't always match up with the bride or groom like how do you resolve those those differences i think you know you just have to realize that they're doing this out of love and you know you can listen to what they have to say doesn't necessarily means that you have to um you have to take everything that they say as the way it's going to be. It's still right. your day. But I think it's important for your relationship with your parents to listen to them. Well, but what if they're writing the check? Well, I think what you can do is you have your list of the things that you want at your wedding, your vision, things. There's going to be some things on that list, like you've got your top five. Maybe right. the next five, you have a little more flexibility on and you allow them to make some decisions maybe on those items. That way they feel like they're part of the process or you give them a choice of a couple. Say, I was thinking about this or this mm. and this or this. So there's still your ideas, but maybe allowing them to have an input in that way. 
makes them feel part of the process and especially when they're paying so like so, so i like that i like the idea of like like these are my top five these are my absolute have to have and then the next five you know i these are a give and take that i can include my family so that way you know i feel they can feel like i'm actually listening to them right so they get a little input they feel the love but they're not ruining your vision or your plan See, I, I, I think that's essential. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, I think it's very important from the very beginning, the, the moment you sit down with them, to um, just to set a boundary and say, you know, this is, this is, you know, like Nicole said, these are what I, this is what I envision. This is yep. what I see. Um, and just have a conversation that, because it does get crazy. And the more you get into it, the more, crazy it gets so don't expect it just to be a smooth ride the whole time <laughs> from the beginning say you know you guys <laughs> you, you need to sit down and say okay what is your what are you expecting because there's always a crazy aunt that gets involved always you know some there's always, always. on top well and that's it. the thing is that so set the boundaries and say this is my day and if you're paying this and this what do you expect from me for that i mean are are there expectations of me of being the bride um to give in and give you because you are paying I mean, have this co this difficult conversation in the beginning so that you have the boundaries. And I think that's like really um, important because I'm actually gonna, like I'm actually in the process of working through the family dynamics on a wedding that I'm doing where the family is paying, but then the bride and groom are gonna pay like whatever the overages are. So like if they liked flowers that were a little bit more than what the budget was calling for, you know, the hard part though, is that, you know, the parents know their kids and have gotten used to saying certain things. So they don't, they, they don't, I don't sometimes realize, I don't think they realize sometimes some of the things that they say over and over and over that from an outsider's point of view would go, wow, that's kind of hardcore. Uh, I'll give you a, well, I'll give you a, a specific example. So I have a, a, a client and I'm not going to say who it is and I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff, but they- I and, will. And, no, you won't. And, but but they they constantly say that my daughter has a diamond budget. Uh, I mean, diamond taste on a beer budget. I mean, and that's how every conversation starts. My daughter has a diamond taste on a beer budget. And I'm like, okay, we know that. We've talked about that. We were trying to work within that. So, you know, if your daughter wants to pay the $2,500 extra on the floral, you know, that should be her decision because she's an adult, but not inside the family. Where do I limit my conversation? Right? Where, where do I stop and say, you know what? That's not my, that's not my, that's not my world. I need to like, who is my client at the end of the day? Is it the daughter? Is it the bride or is it the parent? That's a little bit of both. It's, it's yes. But it's, it still leans more towards the bride and the groom because it's really, the day is happening because of them. Mm -hmm. um, and whether or not they're the paying client or not, they're still your, they're going to be the, in your life for many, many years. Yeah, so that's, and I've always said that. I said the bride and groom are my focus. That's where my loyalty lies is with the bride and groom. But of course, you know, when we're talking about event professionals, I mean, all of us have walked into this. I mean, Tyler, Nicole, I know that in Marcy, we've mm -hmm. all dealt with a parent that then you know, kind of pushes their view into it. And, you know, you, you have to respect the family boundaries, but at the other end, it's like, you know, you have to have faith in your own abilities to say, no, I don't think that's correct. Right. I actually had one not too long ago, so I can kind of speak to this that um, the bride had a she had her heart set on a specific invitation and the parents were not having it. <laughs> Why? Because of taste or cost? Because it was an online company that she found. Right. And it's strictly an online company. It's there was nobody to talk to. There's no uh, you know, she didn't get to fill the paper or any of that. Right. I think that what I was able to do is kind of give her an aesthetic of what she was looking for in the end with the paper, knowing the paper quality and such, 
the parents were actually a little bit knowledgeable about paper. I'll leave it at that. Right. Um, so there was a foundation where I could kind of pull in and rein in both of them, but it was a little bit of a balancing act because the bride was very strong in her view and the parents really wanted to just focus on what they wanted, but I needed them to open up and listen to their daughter and the reasons why she wanted it. And I kept saying, you know, maybe there's a reason why she wants it this way. Maybe it has to do with, you know, her, her, her vision of her wedding. Right. And, you know, eventually we got to that place, but it, it took a little bit of finessing. I mean, well, you know, I mean, it's part of our open. job, part of our job what? is psychologist, part of our job is being a right. psychologist. And exactly. by the way, David Ackman online said, uh, the, if you pay, you get to say, I mean, yeah. Well, you do say. Job. well, I think it's your job as the event planner to kind of take some of that pressure off the bride a little bit. You know, you're there to kind of to be their advocate and say some things that maybe she can't say directly to her mother right. or whoever is being pushy. You know, you were kind of the go between. So, um, well, but you guys have both dealt with this. Nicole and Tyler, I know you both have had to deal <laughs> with this specifically where you're like, okay, I have to be the bride's advocate, but I have to do it in a gentle way, you know, to kind of push, like, to make sure that the bride's vision comes through. And, but, and then sometimes you have to put your foot down, you know, most of the time you're nice about it, nice about it, nice about it. And then sometimes if someone is really assistant, you have to say, you have to kind of be, you have to be firm with it and put it, put your foot down and say, Hey, this is the way it is. So um, when you get pushed too far, you know, and the chips are down, you can do it and you can help the bride, the bride out. So I think, I, I think, so to wrap that question up, I think that if you're, you're watching this and you're a bride, you know, I think the very first thing that needs to happen is that after you say yes to the engagement, you should absolutely start thinking about boundaries and about like, what is really important to you? The five things that are really super important to you. So that way you can say, these are my must haves. I must have these things and then be flexible with the others. Right. I mean, simple, simple, simple answer guys. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, we're not going to try, we're not going to solve everybody's issues on this. We're not going to get involved in everybody's, but I think that it's really important that if you, once you say yes, it, and you get very excited, oh, I'm so excited. And they're like, oh my God, who's paying for the wedding? <laughs> write down your, write down your top five. What are the top five things that are important to me? And then stick to those and let everything else be okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. So... <laughs> Yeah, right. like everybody's like, yeah, give your okay. clients, give your clients a little bit of homework, tell them they need to go and discuss it together um, and come up with a list, like you're saying, of the importance of what's important to the bride and groom or the, the couple and what's important to the parents. So I've always said to people like, you know, get the money conversations out at the beginning because you don't want those to happen close to the wedding because then people still feel bad or angry or whatever, like at, when the wedding actually starts. If you have those, those awful conversations, and because they can be awful conversations, especially during this time, if you have those early and then you have six months between now and the wedding, people have time to get over it. Yep. Right? I mean, because that's yes. basic psychology. You, you want to make sure that those tough conversations happen first and then allow the happiness to come back into it. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. All right, yeah. so. I, I think it's, it's important to have a discussion before you start doing appointments. I, I think this is what you're saying. Yeah. So let's say you're going to see me as a florist. A lot of times um, a, a mother or the bride have not done much research into things and they don't really have an idea of what the parents are willing to spend. That, turns into a really uncomfortable situation when you're sitting down with the professional. Um, so have those conversations, have all that knowledge armed and ready oh. to go before you, you know, have some idea not talking about, yeah. you know, gladiolas versus on city and mortgage. 
Well, and that's, I, I feel like that is like, if you're just at the beginning portion of it, I think that, you know, if you reach out to an event planner and say, look, I just want to book an hour session to talk about the things that I need to be worried about. I think that would be worth a lot in the long run to be able to just have some, you know, get some education, right? Yeah. Just what, you know, I, yay, I'm so excited. I'm super happy. I, I'm about to be married. What should, what do I need to think about? You know, and I feel like that that hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars that you're going to spend for that hour, we're gonna, is going to save you a ton later, and just emotional drama and just financial drama. You know, but I think it's important that if you're just starting out, even if you don't hire a wedding planner, get some professional insight. You know, people people go to uh, to counselors and psychologists all the time. You know, weddings. We're messy. <laughs> I mean, weddings are messy, you know? All right. So next question is to save money. I'm thinking about not doing a rehearsal dinner or a brunch. Is this taboo? Oh, I think it's today. You know, I mean, um, I think people want to lower their risk threshold out and about at things. I don't think people want necessarily, uh, rehearsal dinner, wedding, three-day event nowadays. Um, I think it would be cute. Maybe if you don't want to do the whole rehearsal dinner, you could also do something where like a little, like a continental breakfast basket or something is sent to, you know, guests in the hotel. Oh, that's cute. That's yeah, cute. I mean, there's like ways that. to kind of uh, do something different or even like, uh, you know, you maybe even you give them some coupons for different takeout places that they could order and try if they're visiting from out of town. But I think nowadays it's it's fine, especially because you know it is uh, we're in an uncharted territory. You can even give a to-go box kind of thing at the end of the evening, at the end of the wedding, or the next morning. Yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea, right? To to, to so that like way a little is... gable box and you know full of like you know bagels or whatever the case might be, just something so that they have something to put in their bellies first thing in the morning. I love that idea because then they don't have to deal with other people, you know, mm -hmm. limit the exposure at this point. I mean, now, again, we're probably talking what next eight months that we're going to have to think about this, you know, until there's a, a vaccine and then, you know, hopefully the world tends to go back to normal. But I really think that um, some of these practices that we're doing now are going to like hold they're going to be here and after this is even done and also like it'll save couples money i mean i tell people all the time like a rehearsal dinner is not it's not mandatory don't feel pressured to to you know uh, pay for somebody else's vacation right i mean and that's great but if you can't that's okay Right. Well, I mean, can, oh, all right. So uh, let me let me equate it to when you go to Disney. How many times have you gotten these like little commercials that say, "If you come to our three-hour presentation, we'll give you tickets to Disney." Yeah. Right. I feel like weddings kind of follow the same kind of pathway. It's like, oh, if you come to our wedding, we're going to give you a rehearsal dinner and a brunch. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not. We don't want that. They're separate things, right? Yeah, so, right. so uh, give me some ideas about like what people can do outside of a rehearsal dinner. Like, like what are some options that they could say, you know what, we're not going to do a rehearsal dinner except for like our close friends and family, you know, immediate wedding party. What are some ideas that you think would be great for people to do that would be low cost, low budget? To, for what, for an alternative to the guests who are coming to the wedding on when the rehearsal dinner would be? Correct. Like, in other words, you know, you've got people coming in from out of town, but you want to include them, but you don't need to, you don't want to pay for a full dinner. What are some options? Like a welcome reception kind of feel. Um, yeah. Maybe not for a full dinner, but for more of like hors d'oeuvres. But obviously we have to be very cautious about how we're doing hors d'oeuvres these days. Yeah. Um, you know, something of that nature where it's maybe like an hour. It doesn't have to be like a three hour dinner. Right. Or I think you could do something again, kind of like with the check-in at the desk, like when they check in at the hotel, they're given a little goodie bag or something that goes to their room. Maybe it has some like menus in it for local places. Maybe it has 
um, you know, some snacks, maybe has some mini bottles of alcohol, you know? Well, so like the W in Fort Lauderdale has a Friday night DJ. Like it's incredible. They have this whole like party thing that goes on on Friday night. So if you have a Saturday wedding at the W, you can actually invite people to the Friday night DJ session, which is cool because is it's free. Happening? Yeah, well, not now. I mean, <laughs> I thought we were talking I mean, about. Yeah. You know, I mean, I do mean, they I'm limit, just, huh? Do they limit the number of people that can attend? No, because you know what they're making money on is the drinks, okay. you know, so it, they, it, anybody can show up and listen to the music. So I think that's a cool idea that, you know, that's if you cool. find out what's happening in the area and then tie it into your wedding and say, oh, there's this cool band that is playing at, uh, I'm going to just say Dixie Chicks. I don't know why that's in my head, but, you know, playing at the, the bar Dixie Chicks at, you know, 101 South Ocean Drive, right? Join us there for some fun. You're not saying that you're going to pay for anything. It's just a, a way for people to, to gather. And it's free entertainment. Yeah, there you go. I like that idea. Good. Well, look at that. I mean, look at the, uh, the what is it, Bee Ocean. They have the Mermaid Show. I mean, there's there are oh. so many activities at these places. You yes. just need to find those activities. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Bee Ocean has the Mermaid. That, I mean, and now they have the male Mermaid. I Mermen. Have, Mermen. The Mermen show. I mean, how cool would that be? Like you have a wedding on Saturday. It's like, oh, and by the way, I, I can tell you from doing weddings there that they are pretty good about giving you tickets for your guests to go to that show. So that's a freebie that they can easily give to you because your guests will pay for drinks. You're not paying for their drinks, you know, but you're, you are getting them into the show for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Tyler, any comments? No, I like that idea. I've been trying to think here of some alternate things, but I'm kind of drawing a blank on that. Um, the, the last wedding I did, the one in Oklahoma, they, they did away with both the rehearsal dinner and the right front. The parking lot. Well, so, and did and anybody say fun. anything? Did anybody say no. anything? People were fine with it. You know, they, they put their energies more into the reception. And um, you've entered the parking lot. And it was fun. Ha! Ah! Well, you, I, I'm glad that you're arriving at your destination. <laughs> this has been a rough ride, too. I'm sure I've made all kinds of fun faces. <laughs> all right. All right. So our next question is about combining religions. So the idea is, how do you combine, a, and it, it's pretty specific. Uh, hold on. Let me get the question. It's pretty specific about combining Jewish and Christian religions for ceremony and then dinner, et cetera. So I talked to um, Marcy off camera before the show to talk a little bit about this because, you know, do you, you know, when you're talking about these specific religions, is it kosher, not kosher? Do you do the cocktail reception before? So for those of you that are just watching us, um, some of our religious uh, Jewish clients tend to do a cocktail reception before the ceremony, like this full on, you know, crazy over the top food bar and then the ceremony and then the dinner where most Christian weddings do uh, ceremony, then cocktail, then dinner, right? So it's a little bit different. I mean, uh, Marcy, can you talk a little bit more about like kind of like these two worlds and how to combine them? Okay, so I mean, first and foremost, as a, as a couple, bride and groom or bride and bride, bride and groom and groom, you need to figure out what the two of you are most comfortable with as a couple. And not just about the two of you, but then talking with your families before the wedding. Don't wait to the wedding day. Um, it's really important for everybody to be on the same page figuring out how much religion or religious um, uh, religious connotations you want in the ceremony, yep. how much of it you want um, to be reflected of one side versus another, um, and then figuring out how to navigate through the whole process with regards to the ceremony and the cocktail hour and the dinner. So um, thinking about all of those aspects um, really is about the couple and then getting together with the fam each side of the families, just so that everybody's on that same page. Um, as far as what, you know, whether or not it's going to be kosher or not kosher, yeah. that's up to the couple. If they are a religious couple, 
um, you know, I would tend to think that things might be a different overall anyway. Um, if they're going to be meaning that um, they probably would be more apt to to marry someone in, you know. Well, so, you know, so what I, what we discussed is, you know, figuring out how to do the party first and then how to infuse the religion after. After. Like, what kind of party do you want to have? Do you want to have this kegger? I mean, I know that sounds weird, right? Kegger wedding, you know, Oklahoma backyards. Hello, Tyler. You know what, what I'm talking about. Anyway, so, or, or do you want like a full on sit down dinner and like, you know, traditional, 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 God, hello, say that three times, but you know, then backtrack and then figure out how to focus the wedding in it. So if it's kosher, like if you have, let's say 20 people that are kosher, you could easily use somebody like VIP catering to bring in those mm -hmm. 20 kosher meals. And they then, did oh, they did yours, right? Yeah. So they did Marcy's wedding, but you know, they could bring in those kosher meals separate, all wrapped and ready to go just for those 20 people, you know, or- Or they can do a full, a full uh, kosher event, which is what we did. And a lot but, of people don't even realize that they're eating kosher. Yes. No, a lot of people didn't know. <laughs> We had we had people from both sides of you know of the family and and people who were you know work uh, you know work people that we invited as well. So we did have people that were not Jewish at the at the wedding. One of the things that I thought was really kind of a great way to get the night started was yeah. people were arriving. They were greeted by bellmen, you know, bellmen type of style uh, at the door, and they were greeted with either champagne or something else to drink with a little bit of food before the ceremony. The reason right. being is that typically in a, like in a Jewish wedding, you're going to take, you know, typically you'll take pictures before. Right. Because right, right, right. the couple can enjoy afterwards with the rest of the, you know, the attendees that are there. But you have to be careful so. that you don't give them like a bottle of tequila before the ceremony. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have to kind of keep it small. <laughs> I mean, Nicole. Or you, you get gifted one and someone steals it. Right, exactly. Oh, she gifted when somebody steals it. She's a, a, true story, actually. Somebody gifted us a bottle of tequila, and one of the one of the service people stole it. But, oh, yeah, but we know that's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, then we found it. But well, Nicole, but Nicole, I mean, what did you do for your wedding? Did you have a full bar before the ceremony, and then how did that like, you know, did that create turmoil? Which wedding? <laughs> your second. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, no. <laughs> well, I mean, I have been. Uh, so the first, my, the, my first wedding was very like traditional, kind of followed the format of everybody else, which was no alcohol before, um, you know, before it, the ceremony. Yeah. But we were, I remember we were kind of running behind because the limousine didn't show up. Um, oh, so, God. Yeah. So the limousine that was supposed to take us to the location just, and this was cell phones really so you couldn't get on the cell phone and call right. um, oh, wow. so literally i had to jump into my girlfriend's like little tiny sports car with my big floofy uh 95 you know 1995 wedding dress like up around oh, my ear hello diane uh, to drive. <laughs> yeah. Diane. yeah so but i remember that they did serve a little like hors d'oeuvre and drink um after the ceremony but before the um we had, there was a cocktail reception for the guests, but for the wedding party and um, a little bit, just something to take the edge off while, be, while you got the party started. But when I, Mer Michael and I got married, it was no holds bar, man. We had everybody looped up well before the ceremony even happened. Everybody You're like, yeah, oh, there's an open bar. Have at it. Uh, we'll see you. Our Woo! signature cocktail was the Mai Tai because our first official date was in Hawaii. So that was our, our, our signature cocktail for our wedding. Wow. And they were very strong. So, wow. so people were very um happy. Well, so so I feel like if you're just planning a wedding, this is your first, let's say it's your first. I think it's really important to have at least one or two cocktails available before the ceremony because people are driving from long distances, right? And people are nervous, they're going into a new situation. So, you know, I, you don't want to open the floodgates. But you, you definitely want to make sure that people have at least access to water. And before, yeah, absolutely. You know? And it's fun to have a signature cocktail. Like if you and your fiance had a drink that was, you know, you had on your first date or if there's something, 
that's really fun. It's a fun way to kind of tie your personality into it. And I love that if you, and you know, what I, what I love is that if you do little business cards and tell the story about your first date and why this, this drink is significant, I mean, it feels a little corny, but honestly, those are the little things that draw people into your experience because that's what you're doing, right? You're drawing people into why you two are at this point in your life. Yeah. I think, I think it's anything you do that is kind of unique to yourself is wonderful because no, there are no rules anymore, really. I mean, it's it really fun. isn't. No, it doesn't. There I isn't. It's all changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's all changed. I mean, I have I have uh, like strictly Catholic weddings doing hoopas because they like the visual. It is beautiful. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, it's totally beautiful. Right to have that four post, like oh my god, over the top, beautiful. Yeah. You know, so the idea that it's called a hoopa, you know. Do you really need to call it a hoopa anymore, or do you just use it for your Jewish clients? I mean, I, it, just, I guess it depends on the client that you're dealing with, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you love something and you want it at your wedding, it's your day. Have it. You, you know, that's it. Oh, is somebody smacking you? What's happening? Yeah, that's Michael. <laughs> is he? Is Michael in the power, pirate outfit? No, he's not in the pirate outfit today. <laughs> not today. He's been building the squirrel tables nonstop. So by the way, if you haven't noticed that Nicole, by the way, and, and what is it? Uh, what's your Instagram? It's called uh, the Squirrel Lounge. Squirrel underscore lounge, right? Yeah, squirrel underscore lounge, yeah. Oh my God. You will just love <laughs> these, like these. Oh my God, I have one. They sent me one. Oh my God, I just love it. Look at this, how cute is this? Is. This is actually the, uh, an Italian flag one for Bonnie. Bonnie ordered uh, an Italian oh, cute. flag. Oh, oh my God, that is so cute. So, so for Cafe a la carte, they're gonna have uh, the very gonna cute have girls now making their coffee. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 but yeah, so we've been enjoying our squirrels a lot. They become very spoiled, but um. Well, and I and you said one of them was getting fat, but I said they're probably pregnant. I, I'm hoping. I would love to have baby squirrels. How cool would that be? We have three that come oh regularly God. now. Yeah. Well, so by the way, Tara said hi, everybody. Hi, Tara. We love seeing you. Um, so okay, so back to the the wedding question. When you're talking about like you know you're gonna have some people that are hardcore um, Jewish, hardcore Christian, depending on like where they come from in their family. You know, I think, again, I think this goes back to our original question about setting boundaries at the very beginning, right? I think yes. all of that we're talking about goes back to that first question about who do I smack first, you know, and I think, <laughs> no, right? You know what? I think we spend way too much of our time trying to please other people and this, in this particular instance, don't. Right? Don't. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really about like, you know, what do you want to do as a couple? I mean, do you want to do the horror? Do you want to, you know, do you want to do is, I don't da, know. Da, da, yes. da, da, da. but you know, I mean, like there are certain things that you have to iron out as a couple and that's part of the fun and the excitement of planning a wedding. So it's somebody, fun. so I, I had a couple actually just that this was really funny because they are like no line dancing, including the horror. <laughs> I was like, I've never heard the horror related to a line dance. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, it, you know, they didn't want the, oh, Macarena, and then the horror. They, they, no. they felt like they, they were both the same. same. I world. know. I was like, what? Okay. You know, but that just tells you that there's so many different variations of it. And I, and I feel like in this world today, more than ever, the, you have a bigger say than ever now because... You, I mean, we're in unprecedented times. I mean, this is mm -hmm. the time to really focus on what you want. What do you want for your wedding day? And I know that you're gonna have parents that are, that are gonna try to pay for it, that are going to try to put in their input, but we're gonna go back to that original question that, you know, put down the five things that you truly want. What are the, the five things that you will not bend on? And then have some fun with the rest of it. And I think that the bottom line here, in, in it, so I'm kind of seeing a whole trend of today, is it really is about communication. It is about what you as a couple want to do to about how you're conveying or receiving information from your families. And 
that's the important part. It's all about the communication part and just be clear with people and, and take in the advice, but then figure out what you two want to do together. Right. Well, and I tell people that, that, you know, when they're talking to their family, respond in email that you get to pause and reread what you say in the email. Because a lot of times we respond on emotion and, mm -hmm. you know, that might trigger a lot of other things that happen down the line. So maybe you want to take a time, take a moment, write down what you're going to say, reread it the next day, but give yourself 24 hours. Make you sure know. you don't automatically send it. Oh God. Yeah. Right. And when oh, you God. write, and when you write, always be concise. Like Short really and sweet. specific. Yeah. Really specific. You know, don't do a lot of commas. Don't do a lot of colons. Oh, that was weird. Anyway, but you know what I'm saying? Don't don't make that sentence su super long. Very straight to the point. This you is don't, what you I don't need. have to this explain yourself either. You don't have to explain it. We, I think we spend so much time ask, you know, trying to make people happy and then trying to explain why we want what we want. You don't have to explain it. Say this is we what really I really don't. Yeah. No, you don't. I mean, we all kind of get a, the idea of like, you know, we've, we've talked on future or on previous uh, episodes about budgets. We've talked about um, centerpieces. We've talked about hotels. We've talked about food choices. We've talked about, uh, I'll go back to budgets. You know, at the end of the day, the very beginning of all this question, all of these things is the joy of saying yes, right? I think that, you know, try to stay in that moment of saying yes and then immediately after, start figuring out what's important to you, right? What yes. is important to you as far as sharing your celebration with other people? And that will drive all the other questions. It'll drive your budget, it'll drive your location, it'll drive your centerpieces, you know, but you really do have to come down with your five, like what are the main things that I find important that I wanna share with my friends and family? Do you guys agree? Absolutely. But I do think, you know, we do need, you do as a couple need to listen to your family, listen to your parents. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to take the advice, but you should listen to them and show a little respect because they, you know, they're, you're here because of them. So mm. always respect your family. Well, to a point, I mean, to a point, you know, to a point. I mean, because you, you, you are an adult now, so you have to kind of start taking those responsibilities as such. Well, and, and it, it's it's your special day. You know, one of these yes. days, you're going to be 20 years down the line looking back at your wedding and go, why the hell did I make that decision? <laughs> you know, oh, why did I want the floral, you know, the, the ruffle dress? What? But I wasn't thinking about when I, you know, wanted an A-line. So, yeah, so in moderation, everything in moderation. But please stay off of Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pinterest. Yeah. I'm telling you, I one of my first questions I always ask couples is, how, you know, do you have a Pinterest board? Because for me, I get to see the things that they gravitate towards, the things that they like, right. the, you know, the aesthetics of their, you know, the, what's appealing to them. Because I'd rather hone in on what they enjoy or what they're gravitating towards right. than show them something that's totally obscure. Well, but that's a problem though, is, and, and that goes actually back to our first, our, our first question is like, you know, you need to get with a professional to find out how, what things cost, what is considered customary in the wedding world, because a lot of people, this will be the first big event they ever done in their entire life. And then, you know, when they hear a centerpiece is 225, 250, $300, they're like, what, what, that's. <laughs> Really? And, and it, it's, it's like only, wake up call. <laughs> right. It's only for the night. And, you know, because you got to have a starting point. You got to have a starting point to say, you know what? I can't afford the 250. Are there alternatives? And that's when you go to somebody like Tyler and say, you know, my budget's 125 per centerpiece. Or, you know, I have a floral budget of, you know, four grand. What can I do? But you have to, you have to, you have to know what to ask first. And know what, what exactly. when you're looking at things online, you have to know that, you know, the pricing that you're seeing online may not be realistic pricing. So that's why it's really important to go to a professional. 
Yeah, you know, if you go to Alibaba for your invites, I guarantee you that the dollar ninety five is a lie because they need a thousand of them as a minimum order. Yeah, or the material is, you know, coming I know. from China or someone like that, where it's it's not you're not going to get the quality. You're you know, you're you're just you're not gonna get the quality, you're not gonna get the and by the way, that was the true story. I'm st I, st I put an order in for, by the way, this is on a side note, but I yeah. put an order in about almost two months ago for a pair of shoes. And I thought they were coming from America. As it turns out, they were coming from China. I still don't have those shoes. Oh, I got ordered a dress that looked so cute online when I got it. It was like, it was, it was a doll sized. Yeah. Like for a Barbie doll. And it took like eight months to get here. So yeah, 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 no. <laughs> But you never know what you're getting, although they are talking about, and I don't know how, how quickly they're going to invoke it, but they are talking about that they will eventually have um, truth online, meaning that, like what they say, truth in menus, you're right. where that they will have to tell you where the source is coming from, whether it's in the United States or not. Oh, interesting. All right. So we're almost up on an hour. So uh, Marcy, final thoughts? Any, any final thoughts about our topics today? Just be open, listen, you know, communicate with family, but have your own feelings and your own ideas to your wedding because this is your special day and it's for you to enjoy for years to come. Nicole? Yeah, I would say make it yours. You know, the rules are kind of out the window right now. So there are, there's no right, there's no wrong. So make it, make it all about you, make it what you love, make it what's important um, and, and hug and embrace those around you because you know today is tomorrow is not given so because today is the present today is the president uh, and, cheesy. And, and uh pinterest is porn for women <laughs> and tyler any 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 final thoughts well I, I actually like pinterest compared to the old bridal books where they used to have flowers that you could never get a hold of so oh. brides would bring me these books of stuff that you're like yeah <laughs> Um, not going to happen, but I, I agree with everyone. I think have your conversations, have a, a really heartfelt conversation from the beginning when you start the process, um, know exactly, you know, where you're going at. If, if the bride and groom are, are providing finances towards the wedding or the parents, um, the last wedding I did also the groom's family also, because they had certain wishes, um, they actually, put money towards the wedding as well yeah. because there were certain things that was important to their family kind of their their culture so um have all that armed and ready to go because they didn't find out about that towards until the very last minute and it caused a little bit of an uproar so if you know from the beginning um what everyone is expecting um have that all armed and ready and i think everyone should just have fun it's important just to have fun I agree. And for a final thoughts, Brooke, you've been very quiet. I mean, oh, what? I know. What is right going down. on? I'm like, I was, oh. a, I was a good listener today. Everybody had. You great look thoughts. fierce, though. You look fierce, girl. You do. You look oh. fierce. Why, thank you. Um, <laughs> so here's my take on everything. And yes, I have listened to everything. Um, by the way, case side note, when I had to piece out on camera, the construction workers knocked on my door to apologize about all that mess. And all that oh. noise. So, by the so way, I, her I heard half the show. <laughs> so her neighbors were ripping down drywall, by the way, during the show. So she was like, "Can you go to lunch?" Yeah. So please. <laughs> so um, I mean, I know. So just I'm gonna make this short. Um, it can be very difficult when you're not writing the check. So when it comes to the mom and dad battle, you know, I, I understand um, the frustration that you know if, if they're if they're funding this, and I mean what do you do then so but like i agree with everyone keep it your own i mean you got to try to have to find that common ground obviously if uh mom and dad are helping but um i don't know just be kind be safe be in a safe place right now that's all i got and and so my final thoughts are you know when you say yes i think that you know you have fun with the joy of like oh my god we're getting married but immediately make an appointment with somebody in the professional world 
so that way you get an idea of what you're about to face. You know, regardless if it's a wedding in your backyard, if it's going to be a wedding in your clubhouse, if it's going to be a wedding at a five-star hotel, regardless, you need to have a conversation with a professional to figure out, you know, what, what you're about to face because, you know, education is everything, right? Education is everything. But next week, we're going to have a much different show because Brooke, who, who, who do we have as a special guest? Oh, this. <laughs> we should have just put, well, you don't have the poster. I want to plug that. Um, Miss, uh, Miss Continental 2019, current running until probably 2021. Miss Vanessa Van Cartier from across the pond. She's originally from Belgium. So she's a super sweet lady. I've got to speak with her a few times and she's going to give you guys some insight on what it's like to win a national contest and then have to get a visa to come here to work do her reign and then COVID happens to you. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So she travels all quite, yeah. over the world. And, you know, if you're a fan of like RuPaul Drag Race or you're a fan of like just that whole world. Well, we're not um, going to plug RuPaul's Drag Race because um, <laughs> she does not, she does not have any transgendered really. I mean, that's a whole nother show. So we're going to just, that's a whole there's no show. affiliation there because if she was allowed in RuPaul's Drag Race, she would have won that too. So, um, it's true. just exactly saying, true. yeah, we're not going to go there. <laughs> so we're going to get to see a whole new perspective about the, the, the event industry, the entertainment industry. So tune in next week, because I guarantee you that you're going to, it's going to be an eye-opening experience for everybody, including myself, because I'm going to, I'm going to get to hear somebody's story that, uh, I would have never been able to, uh, been able to be a part of unless it had had hadn't been for Brooke for bringing this person in so I'm super excited about this all right everybody thank you again for another Tuesday at two behind the veil Mwah. love you all bye all bye everybody I'll see y'all next week ciao stay safe stay safe and by the way if you have a question send it to info at keithwillardevents.com or send it to Marcy Nicole Brooke or Tyler send it to any of us and then we'll answer those questions live here every Tuesday at two. All right, guys, have a great day. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you.